recording? All right, good stuff. <coughs> Welcome to Hebrews United, the Lord, Yeshua, this beloved holiness instructor, disciple, surgeon, sergeant, about to get into the book as usual. You know we give honor to our high who created all things and called us to salvation, and we give honor to all the ministers, whatever ministration they have, all the brothers and sisters, definitely give ministers through the, your, uh, the wonderful son that came down in the flesh, died for our sins, rose again the third day. So, uh, definitely, uh, Brother Vince, yo, show them how it's done. Show them how it's done. Oh, it's perfect. There we go. I made it just for you. Can you see me? There you go. Uh, yeah. How do you get this lower? You just press it down. Oh, oh, there, there we go. go. Sorry. See? Just gotta hit the waist a little bit more, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so. Um, I'm about to go over some scriptures. Um, some scriptures that I read. And um, kind of meant a lot to me. Because it's just simple simple little scriptures that um will get you thinking like man you know so um we're gonna start off it's in the book of uh romans romans 12. romans 12. yeah last night um when i was at work you know there's a jumper off the coronado bridge you know what i'm saying like could have been Anybody, you know what I mean, to come and interject, you know what I mean, but uh, I guess he just parked on the bridge and jumped off right away, so there's no saving him, you know what I'm saying? But there's little things in this in this world that get us slipping, you know what I mean? And um, Only because we partake in the world, but if we didn't, you know what I'm saying, we know that the Most High is with us, so. <laughs> so, Romans 12, we're going to read, uh, uh, starting at um, verse 1. It says, I, be, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove, that, <clears throat> prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say... Through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to God, hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. That's right. So, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, you never know who you're talking to, whether it be in the marketplace, getting gas, walking down the street, maybe the mailman. You know what I'm saying? People are always going through things, you know what I'm saying? Um, and as we live, uh, a holy and peaceable life, you know, according to scriptures, um, we will find ourselves uh, being more holy, being more of God, and therefore we should be the light in this world, you know what I mean, and, who, and the people who we talk to, you know what I'm will be affected by us. For every action, there's a reaction, so let's, uh, let's keep this in mind as we uh, continue to live our lives daily. Amen? Amen. 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 Go to Simon. Teacher sign it. Thank you. <coughs> Got a little cough, a little tickle in my throat. But um <laughs> pre-workout helps with coughs. I just started it today. It's the uh, pre-workout cough uh, serum. Cotton <laughs> candy. Serum. Uh raw. Pretty twerk. Lit. I think it's lit raw. What's the name, Brad? I'll show you guys. Cotton candy twerk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> pre-work, pre-twerk. I pre-twerk before I go in the gym. <laughs> that way I, my muscles are loose so I can hit the weights. So, <clears throat> you guys ready for some scriptures? Let's go to Romans chapter 7. And, you know, we always have to say, let's let the fingers do the walking and scriptures do the talking. That's right. Romans chapter 7. Yeah. We're going to start at verse 14. <coughs> I want us to pay attention. 
this is going to help some people, especially mm -hmm. people Facebook, mm -hmm. YouTube, because I know every person has been through this or is going through this or is coming to the gospel and will go through this. There's not one person exempt from Romans 7 and 8, well, 7, and hopefully you get to 8. Romans chapter 7, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, and I am carnal, and so would understand. <coughs> For that which I do, I allow not. For that what I would, that I do not. So the things you want to do, you end up not doing. You want to live righteous, you want to repent, you want to stop drinking, you want to stop telling lies, and you find yourself end up going back to that stuff. Let's keep going. And, and I do allow not for what I would that I do not, but what I hate that I do. So we see that you'll find yourself in a place to where you want to overcome sin. And you're trying to overcome sin. Mentally, you don't want to live this life any war anymore. But you keep finding yourself coming back to it. Whether a week later, whether three days, whether a month later, you find yourself coming back. And this is a problem. So let's keep reading. If I do that which I would not, I could sit unto the law that is that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So it's sin that dwells in you. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For, for to will is present with me, but how to perform which is good I find not. Every person coming to this gospel has been in this situation. It's part of repentance. It's almost going through withdrawals. But instead of a person going through withdrawals from uh, nicotine or caffeine or sugar or cocaine, marijuana, your body goes through these withdrawals. You're going through withdrawals of sin. You're trying to stop sinning and you find yourself going back. You find yourself having that urge to chase those girls or drink that or watch this movie, do these things that are pleasing to the flesh. Right. So let's keep going. For what good that I would not, but the evil that which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that which I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. And that's how it is all the time. Whenever you're trying to do good, it's present with you. I was trying to do some stuff for the congregation. Three days in a row, uh, my mom came down. Then I got to get the car. Then all this stuff happened. So finally, Friday, I was like, no matter what, I have to get this stuff done for the things of the Most High. So, for I delight in the law of God after my inward man, but I see another law warring in my members, warring against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity. Say captivity. Captivity. Okay, to the law of sin which is in my members, and a lot of mainly Christians use this Romans chapter seven to justify why they keep going back to sin, or to justify you can't be, uh, uh, you can't be perfect. But this is not what he's saying. If you continue to read, so it says it brings you into captivity. Whether a person has a problem with masturbation, or a person has a problem lusting after uh, women, or a person has a problem telling lies, or cussing, or drinking, or smoking or cigarettes, weed, whatever, they find that I don't want to do this. I want to live righteous. I want to do right, but I find myself keep going back to sin. I, I need help, and I prayed about it, but I still go back. And I pray about it, I go back. I say, forgive me, I go back. I say, forgive me, I go back. I say, forgive me, I go back. Every person on this planet that is saved, or that will be saved, or that wants to be saved, will go through Romans chapter 7. Yeah. There's no, no way around that. So let's keep going. O oh, wretched man that I am, verse 24, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Yeshua, uh, I'm a Sheikh, our Lord. So then in my mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So he's saying the stuff that I don't want to do is the same stuff I'm doing. And when I want to do right, I end up not doing it. I'm in captivity. I'm, I'm slave. And there are these Christians go, they love this Romans 7 to justify why you can't be perfect. And why, see, even Paul, the stuff that he would not do. First of all, this is what before he came to Christ. And you can see now, because verse now, chapter 8, next chapter, it says, There is therefore now, say now, now. no condemnation that are in Amashiach Yeshua, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. This is the difference. He said, when I was in the flesh... The stuff I wanted to do right, but I found myself going back to doing wrong. But now I, I walk in the spirit. I, I'm not in the flesh. It says, for the law of the spirit of life and Amashiach, Yeshua, have made me free 
from the law of sin and death. Now, we just said captivity, right? Yeah. Before he came to Christ, he found himself in captivity, mm -hmm. but he came to Christ and says, now I'm free. Now I'm not a slave to sin. Our Mashiach says, who you yield your silver's member, members, who you yield your members to your servant to, rather sin unto death. So let's keep going. It's verse 3. It says, for what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Because in the old covenant, they didn't have the spirit as a keeper. It moved on the prophets, they prophesied, wrote it down, kept it pushing. Moved on the prophets, they gave it to the people, they said, thus said the Lord, it moved off. They didn't have the spirit of the pe as the keeper, but when they came into Amashiach, they came to uh, 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 Yeshua, they got the spirit as a keeper, now they have power to walk in the spirit. So they fulfill the righteousness of the law. Let's keep going. So... It says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So I want to show you something. Let's go to Luke 18. Luke 18. Because verse 13. Luke 18. Because a problem I have is there's people that want to come. There's people that they, it's in your heart to come and say, hey, Teacher Simon, hey, I, I want to give my life to the Almighty. I want to get baptized. I want to do the right thing. They call me and whatnot. But there's just one. It, sometimes it's just one thing you know you need to give up. Because I, I'm not going to baptize any person that hasn't repented. So you're not going to still be smoking cigarettes and think I'm going to baptize you. you. It says repent and be baptized. Right. And you shall receive it. So you have to repent from sin that, sin that you know of. Before you get done. Otherwise, you might as well just get some shampoo and some rubber duckies because you're playing around. This is why so many people fall away so quick because they get all hyped up and these ministers rush them on. Oh, you want to get baptized? You want to get baptized? And you hurry up and rush them in the baptized and they play. They, they were smoking cigarettes 15 minutes before they got in the water and they smoking cigarettes 15 minutes after they got out of the water. Yeah. They didn't repent. Yeah. It says you got to repent. Yeah. And the thing that's hindering people is it just be like one or two things. Just give it up. If you know you're in an adulterous marriage, hey, it's hard. Give it up. If you know you're shagging up in fornication, give it up. If you know you got to let the weed go, you got to let this go. Half of you people, it's just like one or two things you know you need to repent from, and that's what's hindering you from being saved. It's like, just let these things go. I know the flesh is warring, and I know you don't have the spirit, so you don't have a power to completely just knock out the flesh when you have the spirit, mm -hmm. but he... The Almighty has made it to the wicked one could only tempt you. Yeah, it, it. It's only when you give into that temptation, you give into lust. The thought's going to come, man, dude, I want to get out that girl again so I can sleep with her. No, no, no. No, I want to get out that girl. And then you wake up in the morning, you're at work thinking about that girl, thinking about And next thing you know, you fall back into fornication again. It's like, because in your mind, he can't, the, the wicked one ain't going to force you to sin. And the Almighty ain't going to force you to live righteous. You got to make that choice. And you got to remember, if the atheist could stop smoking, you could stop smoking. If the atheist could not cheat on his wife, you could not cheat on your wife. If the atheist could not be a, a whoremonger or not smoke crack or not smoke weed and stop doing this stuff, you could do it too. Because there's half of these, like 80% of these sins, you could, atheists could do. So if you believe in this Bible, you could do. Now, atheist ankle, it will eat pork, obviously, he, there's no reason for him to stop doing that. An uh, atheist is going to break the Sabbath, and an atheist ain't going to do other things prescribed. But the things were, as far as repenting from fleshly lust, you could do that stuff because you have the Word and you have faith. If you didn't have faith, you wouldn't be watching this, and you wouldn't be reading your Bible, and you wouldn't be praying. You have enough, not enough faith to equate to salvation because if you had true faith, you'll completely repent and go on to eternal glory. But you have enough faith to get you started in the game. To get you started to watch this video. So let's keep going. Luke chapter 18. Amen. Starting at verse 1. And he spoke and he, and, and he spake a parable unto this, saying that man ought always pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. There we go. And there was a widow. In that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, 
Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continueth come, and she shall weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. Shall not God avenge him of his own elect, and cry, uh, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with him? I tell you the truth, that he will avenge him speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth. So he spoke this parable to say you ought to always pray. And the thing is, if you have a problem with fornication, and you know you need to stop, before you go hang out with these people, why don't you just say, hey, let's pray. Let's pray that nothing happens. Even if you have to pray every 15 minutes, say both of you guys are trying to come to the Almighty. Both of you guys want to seek the Almighty, but you guys can't be. And sex ain't no marriage either. Because already, if you guys don't believe me, go look up that video I have. There's an archive, and I dealt with scripturally how just because you have intercourse, that's not your wife. But besides the point is, um, pray about these things. If you know you have trouble watching things you are not, when you get home and say, Almighty, I'm going to watch some TV, give me the strength and give me the discipline. Help me that when I turn on this TV, I don't compromise the gospel. Almighty, I'm going to be dealing with these people. Help me to deal with my anger prior to coming and dealing with these people. Because my flesh wants to knock these people out. But I know I have an anger issue. Hey, Almighty, I, I know, you know, I can't, you're not going to just force me to live righteous. But put these scriptures in my mind. Help me to be spiritually minded. This is why it's so important to read every day. Because you stay spiritually minded. There's been times, at least on my part, when I was young in the Almighty and something happened and I dealt, I had a reaction, and like 15 minutes later the scripture came. Like, man, I wish that scripture would have came to my mind before I got in this situation. I would have made a better decision. And you're like, man. And it's always the scripture will come like a day later or 15 minutes later after the situation. You're like, man, had these scripture been in my mind, I would have been on point because I would have been like, all right, bam, I would have put that flesh in the subjection. Oh, oh, we good? Amen. Cool, right there? Sweet. So, so then um, we have to get into the point to where you're praying more, you're reading more, you're being more spiritually minded. That way you'll want to give up those sins because the problem is, you haven't developed a relationship enough to go all the way with the Almighty in all aspects. Yeah. When you're dating someone, that for her to be your main, she has you have to build some kind of relationship to say for me to just not give up chasing other women and just only to commit to you and rather marriage or rather for us to go steady, for me to just go ahead and just tell these all all these women to bounce, we have to build some kind of relationship and vice versa for the girl. If she has a couple of candidates and you guys go on a date, she, you know, for you to be the only one in her life, you have to build some kind of relationship to where she'll want to go all the way with you and be in your corner all the way and, and have some kind of future. Yeah. But if we're not reading or praying, we're not especially praying before you get into a situation dealing with sin, praying so you can overcome and build a relationship with the Almighty, it's going to be hard to give those things up. Because you have to get your mindset to the point to where I don't want to let my father down. And yes, you have this, dude, I, I don't chase women because I know hell's on the line. As much as I like vagina and there's some fine women I could get out there, but I know it ain't no vagina worth going to Lake of Fire for. That's right. Ain't no, so I know hell's on the line. For me, going to Lake of Fire is just enough. But on the other aspect of this, I don't even want to let my father down. Right. He's done so much, he's never done me wrong. Right. And everything that came my way is whether through some sinners, because the Almighty doesn't take our free will away, or because I deserve it because you reap what you sow. So he's never done me wrong. So why am I going to do him wrong and transgress his commandments? And, but I built that relationship through trust. Just like with your relationship with your wife or your husband, you got to build trust. I built my relationship through spending time. Just like your husband and wife, you spend time going on dates. I built my relationship through reading and learning. Yeah. Just like when you go on dates, oh, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite ice cream? What's your favorite restaurant you like to go do? You learn of the person you're trying to marry or the person you're dating or the person you're married to to know what makes them happy, what makes them upset. What makes it, And how are you going to know what makes the Almighty upset if you don't read or you don't pray or you don't seek the Almighty? So you seek these things of the Spirit because the Spirit and the flesh always wrestle against each other. And as you seek the things of the Spirit, you put that TV down an extra 15 minutes a day, 
and you go out and go for a little walk, extra 15 minutes a day, and you'll be surprised what a 15 minute walk, when you just meditating on the things of the Almighty, or meditating on what you read today, or seeking the Almighty through prayer, 15 minute walk, you'll be surprised how much powerful you, how much strength you'll pull for the rest of that day, yeah. or for the next morning. You'll be surprised, and that will be just enough power to get you to overcome that sin. Just enough to get you to overcome that sin. And so we need to, it's easy for me to say, hey, you need to turn from sin or you going to straight to the lake of fire. It's easy for me to say that, which you will, especially you hypocrites, you will. You know what I'm saying? But I need to equip these people with, okay, how do, I know smoking cigarettes is wrong. I'm the, uh, it says our body's supposed to be the Almighty's temple. But I get these urges and it's hard. Well, you need to get in prayer. Ask most of these people when they keep struggling with sin, ask them. Hey, how, many, how much Bible do you read every day? Oh, man, I probably like once. Because you're not spiritual. How are you going to repent, which is something spiritual, but you're not trying to be spiritual? I say, hey, how, how often do you pray? Oh, I don't really pray. How much do you go fellowship with the brothers and sisters with your support system? Because your brothers and sisters are... They're, when you're running this race, they're cheering you. Oh, you got it. You could do it. You, it. Throwing up those things, little wavy things. What's the little wavy things? You know, blowing the horn and cheering you. Like when you graduate or you're running uh -huh. a race, you know, blowing the horns. They're your support system. Your brothers and sisters are your support system. And they say, man, you could do it. Keep going. Don't give up. Oh, I'm tired. No, you could do it. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. And that will give you that motivation. But as soon as you stop seeking spiritual things, Prayer goes down, reading goes down, fellowship goes down. You're going to go revert back to sin because mm -hmm. you're carnally minded. You go to work, carnal the whole time. Come home, watch TV, carnal the whole time. Play video games, carnal the whole time. Chill with your friends and whatnot. Chill with your wife, your spouse. Don't talk about no Bible. No scripture gets out. No prayer gets out. You're carnally minded. Repenting is being spiritually minded. Stop sinning is spiritually minded. So it's not going to happen. So for you to overcome these things, you have to seek the things of the Spirit. Thank you. And so, so um, Luke chapter 11. Hmm. And uh, verse 1. Amen. Good job, good job. <clears throat> and it says, uh, And it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place, when he sees one of the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught them to pray. So we're going to jump jump down to verse 5, because he, he did what they call the Lord's uh, Prayer, which that wasn't his prayer. That would be more of the Apostles' Prayer, because it says, Forgive us of our sins in Christ and sin. So verse 5, And he said unto them, Which of you have a friend? And he shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. And his friend... Uh, and for a friend of mine is on a journey has come to me and I have nothing to set before him. What's he doing in the middle of the night coming to your house? But whatever, okay, let's not look too deep into that story. But let's keep going. And he, and he from within shall answer said, Trouble me not, at the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise up to give me. I say unto you, though he would not rise to give him bread because he is his friend, but because of his importunity he will rise and give him as many as he needed. <coughs> I say unto you, Asking it shall be given, seeking you shall find, knocking it shall be opened unto you. For every one that acteth receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and him that knocketh it shall be opened. So it says get into prayer. We're going to finish this, but it says get into prayer. Be seeking the Almighty. Do you think the Almighty's not going to hear your prayer if you're trying to pray to overcome sin? If you're praying to overcome sin, Almighty, give me the strength to overcome this sin. The Almighty's going to hear that prayer because you're trying to keep the laws of the Most High. He's going to hear that prayer. But when He gives that way of escape, you got to walk in it because He's not going to give you more than you can bear. He's not just going to give you some power to overcome sin until you repent. You have to show enough power to repent and then get baptized. Then He gives you some more power. But He'll give you the way. As soon as that girl walks by, and someone, hey man, you want a job? And you jump over and start working or something. There's always a way to escape. It says, make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. But let's keep going. Verse 11. And, uh, so a son asks for bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? And if he asks for a fish, shall he give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? 
If then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask for him? Ask him. And so you got to repent to receive the Ruach HaKadosh. you got to have a repentant heart. And then you have even more power to overcome sin. But my main point is you got to be seeking the Almighty through prayer. It'd be these little things that keep people from being saved, man. It's true. Don't let these things bring you down. Yeah. You know, whether you're watching TV, whether it's being on the job site, sometimes I got to watch myself because I have some pretty close uh, work colleagues, I'll say, or whatnot, or workers, uh, co-workers, and they'll tell a story. And it's a thin line between gossip and just telling a story because I could be like, yeah, the other day, a uh, dude hit a fire, uh, fire sprinkler. He was on the lift. And I'm just telling what actually happened two days ago, and it's not even gossip, but then, hey, did you hear what oh, so-and-so did, how he said this and this and this? So it's a thin line between telling what happened the previous week or what someone did, or be gossiping, and just keep in mind, when you're going to tell a story and it's going to make people look at that person in a negative outlook, mm -hmm. don't even tell the story. That's right. Don't even tell the story. Now, if you're saying, yeah, this guy the other day, yeah, you know, you know, he said this. He almost got in a fight with so and so because so and so was being disrespectful with another trade. And you're just telling a story. All right, that's fine. But once this starts, yeah, oh, what he did that? What? Oh, I got to stay away from this guy. And it's gonna cause division. Don't even tell the story, because it says he hates those that sow discord among the brother. And yeah, your co-workers are a brother, but you're still sowing discord, and that's just a bad practice in general. So, <clears throat> so even I need to pray, Almighty. Help me to watch my mind with the information I receive. And if I regurgitate anything, I don't want to get caught up in gossip and being a tail bearer. You know, even mine, because you're dealing with unbelievers and they still affect you. Even though they cuss, those thoughts get in your mind. This is why we don't watch movies with the cussing. This thoughts get in your mind. They say, oh man, I slipped and cussed. It's like you slip because either you're watching this stuff or you're around these people all the time. And it's like, this is why we don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. We can't leave our sinner job co-workers that's just it is what it is you got to work around sinners you got to work around sinners but we could choose we don't have to be unequally yoked with these sinners and we don't have to be putting that stuff in our mind watching the listening to these songs these movies and all that foolishness so let's keep going romans 8 back to romans 8 because i'm gonna hit that with the hebrews 12 so romans 8 amen And then uh, we'll start at verse 1 again. <coughs> Therefore, now there is no contendation in them. Matter of fact, let's just read verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Now, one of the kickers you could tell people that spiritually minded, have you ever noticed that when you talk to these people, all their conversations end up reverting back to the Holy Scriptures? Some way, somehow, their conversations always revert back to the Bible. You may not be a scripture, but it reverts back to giving the Almighty the glory. Now, look at your brothers and sisters that spend most of their time keeping up with the first draft pick of the NFL, who, what Kobe Bryant's doing, this, and then when you talk to them, Everything that comes out of my mouth is carnal. They'll say shalom, and that's the closest thing they got. All right. And that's not even spiritual. That's just saying hi. That ain't even that ain't even nothing spiritual. That's just saying hi in Hebrew, shalom. You know. But but other than that, they're carnally minded. They're carnally minded, and there's nothing wrong with being unsinful carnally minded. Well, if we talked about, you know, I'm thinking about, oh, the stock market's going up. I'm thinking about putting in some stocks or buying a home or starting a business. Oh, those are carnal things. Yeah, you know, you're starting a business or you're going to buy something for cheap and sell it. Those are all carnal. Nothing wrong with it. But when you stay carnally minded, your convictions get soft. You're not spiritually minded. And the, the, car, the flesh and the spirit always wrestle every single day. Every single day, even in your dreams. Uh, one way to know if you're getting stronger, if you have a dream and you're you're being tempted in your dream to sin and you stand for righteousness in your subconscious, I'll be waking up in the morning feeling super charged up. When like there's a dream and someone's trying to get you to sin or some girl you like or something, and in your dream you stand for the commandments of the Most High, and then you wake up in the morning like, yeah, that's what's up. I, I beat the wicked one even in my subconscious state. Like, well, let's get it. You know, but... <laughs> right. But, um... So, verse verse 6, 
For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal minded is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You can't please God. It also says without faith you cannot please God. So if you find yourself struggling with sin, you got to seek the things of the Spirit. And yeah, you may not have the Spirit yet, but you could be spiritually minded and seek the things of the Spirit through reading and praying and fellowshipping with the brethren. To, a, it says confess your faults. If you come into the gospel and you have and you know you're struggling, tell the brothers. They'll give you some ideas. Even, man, I just get bored or whatnot. Well, come over to my house on the weekend. That way you don't got to worry about chasing girls. I don't know where you're going to worry about getting drunk. Come over. You can come over every single weekend. If you had a brother like that, hey, come over and just hang out. We'll play a video game. Because playing video games, that carnally minded, is still better than you getting drunk and sin. Straight sinning. You know what I'm saying? Let's play video games and drink root beer. You know what I'm saying? Cream soda or something. No. I don't care. Do what you got to do to not sin. Do what you got to do to not sin. I remember when I was um, when I was real young and almighty, and it would be Friday night, and I'd be bored. And back in the day, I used to party, and I had this little PlayStation, and this little game that was scratched up Jaws. It never even worked. I was like, almighty, can you please make this game work? Because I'm bored. I have nothing to do. I don't drink. I don't smoke anymore. I have no friends because you say not be unequally yoked and I'm not out there sinning and I'm bored at the house and I don't have cable. And I put that game in the Almighty made that game work for that night. Almighty heard my prayer and the game never worked. It was our, the city was all super scratched up, but it worked for that. Almighty heard my prayer like, look, I'm trying Almighty, I'm trying to live righteous. I don't have cable. I'm just stuck in this house with this sucky game called Jaws on PlayStation 1 and the Almighty made it work. But it was when I first came to the Almighty. And he seen me like, hey, look at my little son trying to live righteous. You know what I'm saying? I got you. And he had me that night. So I thank the Almighty. But seek those things of the Spirit. Hebrews chapter 12, starting at verse 1. We're going to go a little faster. We slow raining today, but we're going we're gonna to go a little faster now. That'll be at 13, 13. Hebrews chapter 1. I mean, Hebrews chapter 12, starting at verse 1. 13, 13. You guys got it? Amen. Sweet. It's what, it says, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that doth so easily beset us, and let us run this race, run with patience the race that is set before us. So I want to keep... He on two things. It says, we're compassed with so great witnesses. We see all these people destroyed in the Bible that live unrighteous. We have all these witnesses. We have all these stories in the Old Testament and in the New of people that got destroyed because they fell into witnesses. It says, seeing we compass with all these testimonies, let us cast away the weight and sin that does so easily beset us. We find ourselves falling. Hey, let that stuff go. There's nothing in this world that's worth going to the lake of fire for. There's nothing in this world worth you not making into the kingdom. This is why it says you can't love wife, lands, houses, mother, father, kids. None of that stuff. None of that stuff worth your eternal destination. We're running this race. And, and, and number two, it says cast away every weight and sin that's set before us. So even if it's a weight, if TV's stopping you from reading, then you need to put TV down. If friends, if family... Nothing should stop you from reading and praying because the all, how can you say the Almighty first and then stuff stops you from that? Then apparently the Almighty is not first because these things are coming before you seeking the things of the Spirit. No. So then the third one, it says that is set before us. So any person on Facebook and YouTube watching this, any person in this place hearing this voice, the Almighty has set a race for every single person that hears this gospel. He set a race for them and you have to run it. Because you're running, your goal is to make it into salvation. So you, you have a race. You have a race. I got a race to run. I got a race a little louder. to run. I got a race 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 to run. All of God's oh, children God. got a race to run. So now let's go. First Corinthians. Chapter 9. You guys did all right. I didn't get left hanging. You guys have my back, faith. 
1 Corinthians chapter 9. We want to start at verse 24. You guys ready? It says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all. Uh-oh. Told you we got a race, right? It says, But one receiveth the prize, so run that you may obtain. So you have a race that is set before you. The Almighty says, You have these witnesses. With all these testimonies, cast away every weight and sin that is easily set before you. And run the race with patience, because it's set before you. Now it says, right here, everyone run, and it says, but one uh, receive it, so run that you may attain. You're running this race so you can be saved. Don't forget why we're running. Don't forget why you, why you say you believe. Because you believe that there's a greater resurrection, that you won't die. You'll be resurrected at the last day and make it in the kingdom. Let's keep going. <coughs> Every man that striveth for mastery is temperament in all things. Like me. I want to be the cleanest. I want to be the strongest I could possibly be in the gym. That's just me. So what do I do? Do I put junk food, a whole bunch of junk food? No. Sometimes I cheat on sugars and stuff like that. I try to hit it hard. I try to get, get my supplements. These people train. Swimmers. Diet. Their temperament. And these people do it. Watch this. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we for an incorruptible. So what do NFL people train and watch their diet and get chiropractors and all this stuff? They train so they could get a ring. They train so they could get a paycheck. These things are corruptible. But we're temperament and we're running so we could get eternal life. That's the difference. So if they're disciplined to you being a doctor and getting your master's and being an open heart surgery or a brain surgery and going through all this school and not partying and not enjoying a, a paying off, get, accumulating all this debt and doing all this stuff and being temperament and being disciplined and all these things so you obtain a degree which is corruptible, how much more for our salvation shall we be temperament in all things and stay away from sin to get it incorruptible? Let's keep going. Therefore, so run, say run, run, not as uncertainly, so fight, I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body, this is a scripture I want to make a banner, especially for me as being a minister, but I keep un, uh, under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself as a castaway. That means I can't be a hypocrite. I teach this gospel talking about you can't sin and I can't be secretly sinning. He says, but I keep under my body and bring to the subjection. Lest when I teach others, I myself go into the lake of fire. I myself ain't going to make it into the kingdom. So let's keep going. We're almost done. So, this is a side note. Let's go to 2 Kings. This is a little side note about running this race. Because sometimes you let people slow you down. And then we're going to get back and we're almost done. Second Kings. You guys all with me? Not going too fast, right? Second Kings. <coughs> Chapter 12. Starting at verse 1. Yep, starting at verse 1. Let me show you something. Amen. Amen. In the seventh year of Jehu, Johash began to reign. He reigned 40 years in he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Zabiah of Beersheba. And Joash, this was, was right in the sight of the Lord all the days, wherefore Jehoiada the priest did instruct them. <clears throat> but the high priests were taken, uh, were not taken away, and the people still sacrificed burnt offering in high places. Joash said unto the priests, All the money of the dedication things that is brought unto the house of the Lord, even the money of every man that passeth the account, and the money of every man that is set at, and all the money that cometh into any man's heart to bring into the house of the Lord, let the priest take it and every man of his acquaintance and let them repair the breaches of the house wherefore every breach should be found. So he had in his heart, hey, I'm going to take the money, the congregation's money, and we're going to repair, we're going to repair this building that got destroyed. We're going to repair. We're going to build the walls, get new windows to do this. We're going to do this stuff. We're going to do the work of the Almighty, right? Verse 6. But it was so that in, in three and twentieth year of the king, the priests had not repaired the breaches of the house. And King Judah called Jehoiada the priest and the other priests and said unto him, Why repair ye not the breaches of the whole? 
Now therefore receive no more money of your acquaintance, but deliver it for the breaches of the house. And the priest consented to receive no more money of the people, neither to repair the breaches of the house. But Jehoiah the priest took a chest and burned a hole into the lid of it, and set it beside the altar on the right side uh, uh, as one cometh into the house of the Lord. And the priest that kept the door put therefore all the money that was brought into the house unto the Lord. And it was so when they saw that there was much money in the chest, that the kings and the scribes and the high priests came up, and they put it up in bags and told the money that was found into the house of the Lord, and gave the money and told it into the hands of them that did the work, and they had oversight over the house of the Lord, and they laid it at the carpenters and the builders and the rock of the house of the Lord, and the masons and the hewers of stone, to buy timber and huge stones and repair the breaches, and the house of the Lord for all that was laid out for the house to repair it. How about there was not made of the house of the Lord bowls of silver, snuffle, basins, trumpet, vessels of gold, or vessels of silver of the money that was brought into the house, but they gave it uh, uh, gave that to the workers to repair therefore the house of the Lord. Moreover, they reckoned not with the man in whose hand they delivered the money to be bestowed on the worker, for they dealt faithfully. So here's a story where this king wants to do the work of the Almighty, and he puts trust in another man, which they happen to be priests, and they were unfaithful. And so the work didn't get done. And so he had to find someone else and say, you know what? I'm not going to let you slow my progress of me doing the work of the Almighty down. And that's the mindset I've been having lately. What a, a perfect example. I'm bringing this back. I'm trying to get certain things done. And uh, I'll say a vehicle. Get a vehicle fixed. And if a mechanic is taking too long to fix my vehicle... Essentially, they're slowing my progress down because I could take this vehicle to do the work of the Almighty. So I can't let a, a unbeliever slow my progress down. I can't do that. So I have to find an alternative. And when, when we run this race, not only you got to deal with repenting from sin, also dealing with doing the work of the Almighty. Don't be letting these sinners slow you down. If they, if they're, if if you put them. And a task, and, and, and it's predicated on their diligence, and they find themselves unfaithful, like these priests were. You got to put the money, or you got to go somewhere else. Because don't let these people slow you down. You're running your race, run your race. Run your race. If you're waiting for your spouse to come home, and her, that person, oh, let's pray, let's read together, or let's go to church together, or let's do this, let's do that, and they're not as eager and zealous to do, then you just leave. Leave her, leave him. Don't let them slow your spiritual growth down. Don't let them slow your money making down. Don't let them slow you doing the work. If you want to go outreach or feed the homeless and your spouse or your brothers don't want to do that and you're waiting for them to want to do that, you go do the work. They don't want to do it. Keep it pushing. Don't let them slow your progress doing the work down. And so we see here in this situation, now the work started. But for years it got delayed simply because he did you know, these people were unfaithful. At some point, he says, man, you know what? I'm not going to let you slow me down anymore. Let's put it in the hands of the people. Let's just bore a chest. Bam, you don't even touch the money. You had your chance. You messed it up. Bam, let's find it. And these people end up being faithful. These people end up being faithful. So back to the race. Let's go to um, Romans 5. Amen. A little side note. Romans 5. Amen. I'm going to start at verse 1. So, let's start at verse 6. For when we were yet uh, uh, without strength in due time, Amashiach died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, and yet peradventure for a good man some would dare to die. But God commended his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Amashiach died for us. And that's my point, is he died for us. And the best thing we can show that we thank for, thank Him is that we live righteous and keep His commandments. And an easy way of rolling into the obedience of the gospel is really developing love for the Most High. Because everyone says, I put the Most High first. Everyone says, I love the Most High. But when it comes to being a living sacrifice, few men want to do it. And understanding, some of you people need to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John again understand what the Messiah done for us so you can start building your relationship start loving them because if you truly love them you're going to keep his commandments if you love me keep my commandments I keep his commandments because I love them 
keep his commandments because I don't want to let my father down. So Ephesians chapter 1. A little real quick now. We're going to start at verse uh, 1. Ephesians chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse 1. We'll start at verse 3. You guys ready? <coughs> Blessed be the God of our Father, of our Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in HaMashiach, according as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before Him in love. So one, you know, that proves you could be perfect because he, he, he says holy and without blame. But my main point is if you heard his voice and you just read this scripture, he chose you out before the foundations of the world. So he loved you before he even created the world. He was thinking of you and he died for your sins. It says he was slain before the foundation of the world in another scripture. So knowing that you're chosen and knowing that he died for you and he cares for you in like manner, show that same care and respect for him. And keep his commandments. Let those little things go. Let's keep going. John chapter 14. Gospel John 14. And then, uh, read verse 15, Brother Vince. Read it out. We can have a little Vince read it. There we go, so it's not backwards. Read it loud, though. Whoever wants to read it. Verse 15? Yeah, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's how Mashiach said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So before you can get to the keeping the commandments, you got to develop some love for the Almighty. You need to develop love for the Almighty. You need to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John maybe again. Read one of them and just acknowledge what he did for you. Before the foundations of the world, he was thinking of you. And he died for your sins. And we have the opportunity to have eternal life. And just keep his commandments. And they're not hard. They're not hard. You know, it seems hard. Some of you guys are addicted to certain substances. Yeah, you have withdrawals. But come out of that stuff. Lay away every sin that does so easily beset you. Deuteronomy 30. We're almost done. Deuteronomy 30. Start at verse uh, verse eleven. For this commandment which I command you this day is neither hidden, neither is it far from off. It is not in heaven that thou shalt say who shall come up f for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. Neither is beyond the sea that thou shalt say of who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. But the word is nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou may do it. See, I have set before you this day life and uh, day life and good or death and evil, and in that and in that I command you this day to love the Lord thy God and to walk in His ways. That's all, and to keep His commandments and His statutes and His judgments, that thou may live and, and multiply. And Lord, thy God will bless thee in the land where thou goest to possess. That's all He's asking us to do. But if thy heart turn away, so that thou will not hear. For thou shalt be drawn away to worship other gods, to serve them. And when you sin, you serve the wicked one, because you do the works of the wicked one. I denounce unto you this day that you should surely perish. You should not prolong your days upon the land, which you won't. You're going to go to the lake of fire. Or that go and possess over the Jordan or to possession. I call heaven and earth record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore choose life, that thou and thy seed may live. Choose life. Don't let these sins. It says, having a great kind of witness, let us lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset us. Choose life. Nothing is worth going to the lake of fire for. Nothing is worth not making it into the kingdom for. What's hindering you? Choose life. Matthew 19. Verse 
verse 16. And behold, one came and said, Master, good ma uh, said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? That's a good question. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Same thing for you. You want to live, live an eternal life and get in the kingdom, keep the commandments. He said unto them, Which? And he said, Thou shalt do not uh, do, uh, do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love the neighbor as, uh, as thyself. And the young man said unto him, All these have I kept from my youth. What lack I yet? And Yeshua said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, Go and sell all that thou hast, give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. But when the young man heard this saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And sure said unto his disciple, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And when his disciples heard this, they were all amazed and saying, Who then can be saved? And sure beheld them and said unto him, Which man that with man this is impossible, with God all things are possible. Now this kept him from making it into the kingdom, and the thing that he had to give up wasn't even sin. He just said, Sell all that you have. Give to the poor, pick up your cross and follow me. Because he the Almighty took it up a notch. That wasn't sin. The problem we have is the stuff that you're harboring is sin. This man just had to sell all that he have and he ain't going to make it in. And him being rich necessarily wasn't a sin. He just didn't want to go ahead and be a disciple of the Messiah and follow him and sell all that he had. Which was a commandment now. So uh, indirectly it was a sin, but him being rich wasn't a sin. Yours is a sin. And you're harboring it. And you're holding on to it. And you know you need to give it up. So just give it up. Let's keep going. Mark 8. Mark chapter 8. Two more scriptures, that's it. Amen. And starting at verse 34. And when he had called his disciples, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever will save his life shall lose it. For whoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. For what sh uh, shall it profit if a man shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? It says right here, if you shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the problem is you're trying to hold on to your life. Because if you're trying to hold on to sin... You don't want to let that girl go. You don't want to let this go. You don't want to let that music go. You're trying to keep some of your old life. But when you get in the water and come out, you're supposed to be a new creature. So you're supposed to let that stuff go anyways. That's the, Don't try to hold on to your old life. The rich man, it wasn't a sin. He just had to sell all that he had. But yours, you're trying to keep some of your life that is contrary to the scriptures. It's contrary to the Holy Scriptures. And you're trying to still, it says if you keep that life, you're going to lose eternal life. You're going to lose it. You're going to lose it. Joshua 24, verse 15. Brother Vince, read that. Read it loud. Joshua, I'll read it because you're putting the scriptures in. Joshua 20, chapter 24, verse 15. Last scripture. Last verse. Ready? Where is Joshua? I'll be 290. <laughs> All right. Are you going to read it? Go ahead. Yeah. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom ye will serve. Choose this day. If it seem evil to serve the Lord, choose this day. Go ahead. Whether the gods which your fathers served, that were on the other side of the flood. Your Christmas, your Thanksgiving, your false Easter, all that stuff. Go ahead. Or the gods of the Amorites mm -hmm. in whose land ye dwell. Mm -hmm. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Go ahead and read that last part again. As for what? Me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's right. I chose to serve the Almighty. You got to choose today who you want to serve. Because it says, who do you, your members to? Your servant. It says, you do the works of your father. 
Satan. He said, your father is the devil because you do the works of your father. So whenever you commit sin, that you're doing the works of the wicked one. So who you want to choose? You want to choose to serve the wicked one? Or you want to choose to serve the Almighty? As far as me and my house and Brother Vince's house, we're going to serve the Almighty. You know what I'm saying? Even if I had a roach in my house, it's got to live holy. Yes, sir. That's what it is. It's going to be keeping the Sabbath, too. With all that said and being done, keep standing, don't drop standards, give the Almighty hand clap.